Ms. Montgomery, I remind you, you remain under oath. Kayla, before, <clears throat> excuse me. Before we broke, you were telling us about your time in the fit shelter. Yes. And you mentioned the defendant taking Harmony's body out of that ceiling. She was still in the duffel bag. Yes. Brought her into the, the bathroom, is that right? Yes. And you said when, when he was in there, you couldn't see what was going on, but you heard a bang? Yeah. What was he doing to her? Trying to fit her in that bag. <coughs> When you say trying to fit her into that bag, is that the bag like this one? Yes. And you heard a bang while he was doing that? Yes. Did you hear any other noises? No. How long was he in the fit shelter bathroom trying to fit her into this bag? About a couple hours. You mentioned him putting her in garbage bags and then squishing her into that a bag like that one. Yes. The duffel bag that he had initially put her in, what happened to that duffel bag? He got rid of it. Do you know what he did with it? I don't know what he did with it but it was no longer, we didn't have it anymore. And was that after the bathroom? Yes. You said that Harmony's body was beginning to smell and that it was horrible. Yes. Did the defendant take measures to combat that, that smell? Yes. What did he do? That is when he took her down from the ceiling and brought her into the bathroom to put her in the garbage bags and to get her to fit in that bag that's similar to that one. And he asked me to bring the bag to his job. Where was his job at the time? Where was he working? At Portland Pie in Manchester. This is still while you were at the Families in Transition Shelter? Yes. How long did he work there for? Um, two months. And you said he asked you to bring the bag to him at work? Yes. Did you, did you obey? Yes. About how, well... How did you get there from the Families in Transition shelter to his work? I walked. And where was the bag at that point? In the stroller. How long of a walk is that from the, the shelter to his work at Portland Pie? About 10, 15 minutes. Was anyone with you during that walk? My two kids. Why did you obey the defendant when he told you to, to bring Harmony's body in that bag to his work? Because I was scared. Are you aware of, of what he did with her body once you brought it to him? Yes. What did he do with it? He put it... Objection source. Sustained. If you would rephrase the question. Your Honor. You said you're aware of what he did with her body at his work at the Portland Pie Pizza Company. How are you aware of what he did with it, Kayla? Because he told me that he put her in the freezer. Was that the only time, to your knowledge, that he put her in the freezer, or were there more times where he brought her and put her in the freezer? That was my only time. I want to go back for just a moment. When he was in the bathroom, you said it was for several hours? Yes. Are you aware of him doing anything to clean up in that bathroom? Yes. Can you tell the jurors what he did to clean up? He used ammonia to clean up anything that 
happened in that bathroom. How do you know he used ammonia to clean up anything that happened in that bathroom? Because he specifically bought it. Were you with him when he bought it? I don't remember. But you remember him using ammonia to clean? Yes. Did he tell you what he believed the ammonia would do? It wouldn't show evidence of any blood or fluids. And did he tell you at that point why he didn't want evidence to be shown? Why he didn't want anything to be shown down the road? So, not, he wouldn't get in trouble and nobody could find anything. Why did he put Harmony in the freezer at the Portland Pie Pizza Company? Because he said that if she's in the freezer, there wouldn't be any fluids or anything leaking. At some point around that time, did you get tax returns, your tax refunds? Yes. Do you remember around when that was? Um, March, February or March, I believe, in 2021. 20, so I still want to talk about the time you were at the Fit Shelter. Did you eventually leave the Fit Shelter? <laughs> yes. And where did, where did you live after the Fit Shelter? Um, Union Street in Manchester. <laughs> Do you remember when you moved into Union Street in Manchester? Yes. What what day did you move there? February 20th, 2020. And did you sign a lease agreement for that apartment? Yes. Did you did you list Harm list Harmony as a child? No. How about on your tax returns? Did you list Harmony as a child? Yes. Can you tell the jurors why you did that? Because she lived with us for six months or more, and Adam told me to leave her on there. Did he tell you why he wanted you to leave her on there? So that it wouldn't seem, it would just show that we still had her living with us. So you moved into the, the, your apartment on Union Street on February 20th, is that what you said? Yes. And that's of 2020? Yes. Where was he keeping Harmony at that point? In the refrigerator of our apartment. And I asked you earlier, and I think you said he began to discuss dismembering Harmony. Yes. What did he say about dismembering her? that he that he just wanted to put her in he would put her in pieces to get rid of her and was that at the Union Street apartment yes that's where that discussion occurred? Yes. Did he ever discuss using tools on Harmony with you? Using tools on her body? He said that he was gonna try and use um, a saw. He wanted to use a hand saw <coughs> or a neutral bullet. And I wanna unpack that. And a neutral bullet. <coughs> neutral bullet. <coughs> Kayla, I'm showing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 63 for identification. Yes. Do you recognize the <coughs> item that's depicted in this exhibit? Yes. Can you tell the jurors what it is? It's a handsaw. It's a handsaw? <coughs> yeah. 
Do you recognize this handsaw? Yes. When the defendant discussed dismembering Harmony, using tools on her. Yes. Is this a saw that he discussed doing that with? Yes. Is this an accurate representation of that saw as you remember it? Yes. Your Honor, I move to strike ID Marcus Full, State's Exhibit 63, and publish to the jurors. No objection. The ID is stricken. It's entered as a full exhibit. So this is the saw that he discussed using to dismember Harmony's body? Yes. That discussion, again, occurred at the Union Street apartment? Yes. <laughs> You talked about something else just then, and we barely caught it. You, you mentioned a Nutribullet? Yes. Can you tell the jurors what that is, what a Nutribullet is? It's like a blender um, that you can make smoothies in or any kind of puree food item. And what did the defendant say about using a Nutribullet? A blender on Harmony. When we lived on Union Street. What did he say about it? He said that it would be good to use. It would help get rid of her. It helped get rid of, of Harmony. Yes. Earlier you mentioned the defendant talking about lying. The idea that, that what was his idea? What was his purpose of using wine? That it would help her body decay. <coughs> That's what he told you? Yes. Okay, well, I've shown you it's been marked for identification as State's Exhibit 62. Do you recognize this item? Yes. And what can you tell, tell me about this item? Do you recognize anything? Um, particular markings on this item? Um, the bag of lime on the left side is similar to the one that he had. When you say it's similar to the one that he had, who's he? Who's the he Adam. that you're referring to? Adam. And, and is there a circle around that bag? Yes. And is there writing underneath it? Yes. Do you recognize that writing? It's my initials. Um, is this an accurate representation of the, the item that you circled and initialed? Yes. Did you write those initials? Yes. Did you circle this item? Yes. Why'd you do that? <clears throat> to let it be known that that's the item that was similar to the one that he had. Your Honor, I move to strike ID and mark as full and publish States Exhibit 62. Any objection? No, Your Honor. All right, the ID is stricken. It's entered as a full exhibit and it may be published. Kayla, who were you with when you circled this bag of wine? Um, Detective Dunleavy and Riley. Is that Max Rayhill? Yeah, that Not one. Detective? Yeah. So you're with law enforcement? Yes. And they asked you if you, if you could identify, <coughs> had you seen? Oh, I'm sorry, objection, Eating. sustained. Had you seen a bag of lime in your Union Street apartment? Yes. Where was that bag of lime located in your Union Street apartment? In the bathroom. Do you know how that bag of lime got there? No. Did you buy that bag of lime? No. When you saw that bag of lime in the bathroom of Union Street, what was going on in that bathroom at the time? <coughs> Adam was <coughs> trying to dethaw her body. When you say Adam was trying to dethaw her body, 
What was he doing specifically? Taking the clothes off of her. And putting her in the bag of lime. And when he was trying to dethaw her body, where was Harmony's body at the time? In the bathtub. And that's when you saw the bag of lime? Yes. Did you see Harmony's body in the bathtub? Yes. I want you to tell the jurors what you saw of her body in that bathtub. I saw Harmony in the bathtub still folded together the same way that she was left in the bag when we took her out of the car. And she just looked like she had just barely any skin, like she was just a layer of skin and bone and she was all bruised up. And what was the defendant doing to dethaw her? He had the hot water running from the shower. And where was the hot water running in the shower? In the bathroom. Where was the hot water running in relation to Harmony's body? Union Street apartment. Harmony's body, where was it in the Union Street apartment? In the tub. Was the hot water touching her? Yes. He was running it over her? Yes. And what was he doing to Harmony's body? during this process? Taking the clothes off of her. Was he touching her at all during that process? Yes. Tell us how he was touching her. He was cutting the clothes off of her and just dethawing her. Did he tell you to help him at some point? Yes. Did you obey him? Yes. Why? Because I was scared. How did you help him? I helped him take the clothes off of her. How did he take the clothes off of her? By cutting it with scissors. What did he do with her body after he cut the clothes off of her? Put her in the bag of lime. You mentioned these clothes. What clothes was she wearing when he put her into that tub? She had a hoodie on. And she had her leggings on. That's... Did you leave that bathroom at some point while he was in there? Yeah. Why? Why'd you leave the bathroom? Because I needed to check on the kids and I couldn't be in there anymore. And, and let's talk about that. What do you mean you couldn't be there in, in there anymore? Because I couldn't handle it. I, I didn't want to see anything. How long was he in the bathroom for that day? A few hours. And that was with Harmony's body? Yes. At some point, did he close the door to the bathroom? Yes. Were you able to hear what he was doing in there? No. Were you able to 
Why weren't you able to hear what he was doing in there? Because our neighbor next door always had loud music playing and I couldn't tell what noises were happening. You mentioned the shower being on earlier. Yes. Did that shower stay on after you left the bathroom? It was on when I left the bathroom, yes. And did it stay on? Did he leave it on? Yes. Did he take breaks from what he was doing in the bathroom at any point? No. Did he leave the bathroom at any point? No. How many bags did you see in the bathroom with him? Three. And what was happening with each of those bags? He had lime in the bags. So one of the bags was a bag of lime? Yes. Was it a large bag or a small bag? The bag that he was putting them in were large trash bags. The bag that, he, that contained the lime, was that a large bag or a small bag? It was a large bag. A large bag of lime? Yes. You said that he was putting that lime into a bag? Yes. Was there anything else in the bag when he was putting the lime in? No. Did you see Harmony's body go into the bag? No. What happened to Harmony's body after it was in the bathtub? He, it was in the CMC bag. What did he do with the CMC bag? Put Harmony in it. What did he do with the lime that was in the bathroom? It was in uh, the big trash bags. The lime was in the big trash bags? Well, I know he put the lime in trash bags, but I didn't see that bag after. Which bag did you not see after that? The lime bag. Did he also add lime to the CMC bag? <coughs> yes. Was he talking to you during this process? No. He was working? Yeah. At any point, did you see him remove Harmony's body from the bathtub? No. You mentioned earlier that he put Harmony's bag, body back into the CMC bag. Yes. How do you know that he did that? Because he put the bag back in the freezer after. You mentioned garbage bags. Yes. What was he doing with the garbage bags in that bathroom? He had the big garbage bags put in the CMC bag and had the lime in the bag. And that clothing that you mentioned, he used scissors to cut off her clothing? Yes. What happened to her clothing? What happened it, to Harmony's clothes? It was put in a trash bag. Was anything else put into that trash bag with her or with, with the clothes? Not that I, oh, the duffel bag. So you saw the duffel bag again after the fit shelter? Yes. And that trash bag that the duffel bag went into, that the clothes went into, what happened to that trash bag? I don't know. Did the defendant tell you what he planned to do with that trash bag? Throw him away. Did he tell you specifically where he was going to throw it away? He just said he wasn't going to leave him in our trash area. He was going to bring him somewhere. Did he say why he wasn't going to leave them in, his, in your trash? So that there is no evidence. Do you recall telling investigators that when you saw Harmony in the bathtub, the defendant was squishing the liquids out of her? No. You mentioned earlier the defendant talked about dismembering Harmony. Yes. Did he do that in the bathroom? I don't know. That conversation about dismembering Harmony conversation about using the tools. How close in time was that to the steps, the actions that the defendant took in the bathroom? Uh, 
Well, I know that the conversation with the tool happened when I lived with my mother. Okay. We were staying at my mother's house. And by the time that he, by the time that he was trying to, I don't even know what he did, but it was a few months after. You mentioned earlier that the defendant squished Harmony at the fit shelter. He squished Harmony into that CMC bag. Yes. You said that, that her body filled that bag. Yes. How was he able to add lime to that bag if it was full of Harmony's body? I don't know. You don't know what he did in that bathroom? No. And I believe you said this already, but what did he do with the, the bag, the CMC bag, after he was done in the bathroom? He put it in the freezer. Did the defendant ultimately dispose of what remained of Harmony's body? Uh, I don't know. Did he get rid of her body? Not then. At some point? Yes. And so I want to turn your attention to that. At some point, did he have a conversation with you about getting rid of that CMC bag, of getting rid of Harmony's body? Yes. And can you tell the jurors what that conversation involved, what, what, what he said? He said that, um, that he wanted to get rid of her body soon because he was scared that if anything ever happened, he was scared of what would happen to him and me and the kids. And what steps did, did the defendant take to get rid of that CMC bag that had Harmony's body in it? He got in touch with an old friend of his. Do you remember that old friend's name? Beach, Travis Beach. Did you know Travis Beach at the time? No. Had you met him before? No. Do you know how the defendant got in touch with Travis Beach? Um, I don't know who reached out to who, but I knew it was about um, selling a gun. And did Travis Beach ever come to your apartment? Yes. Did he come to your apartment with a female? Yes. Do you know that female's name? Brittany. And is that Brittany Bedard? Yes. You may proceed. Miss <clears throat> Montgomery, uh, 
<coughs> you mentioned a Brittany coming to your house. Yeah. Do you recognize the person that's depicted in this image? And I should say for the record, I'm showing Miss I'm showing Kayla what's been marked for identification as States Exhibit 55. That's Declan. You recognize the, the individual in this image? Yeah. And you said it's Declan? Yes. Who is Declan to you? My son. Did Brittany, did she stay at your house for very long? A couple days. Okay. And at some point after Travis Beach, Brittany Bedard arrived at your, your home on Union Street, did you go to a hotel with them? Yes. At some point after they came to your house that day, when you went to that hotel with them, did you become aware of a U-Haul? Yes. And, and what was the purpose of this U-Haul? So that Adam can use it to dispose of Harmony's body. Do you remember the name of the hotel that you stayed at? The Econolage. And you mentioned not having an ID, not having a, a license. Whose name was that Econolodge room under? Brittany. Did they stay at the O'Connell Lodge with you? Yes. And were they in the same room as you or a separate room or something else? Separate room. When did you first become aware of the U-Haul? Um, Adam had talked to me about um, having her rent a U-Haul to use. Did Adam tell you why he wanted her to rent a U-Haul to use? Because she has a license and to have it in somebody else's name. Why did he want that U-Haul rental in someone else's name? So that they can't prove that Adam rented it. Did you see the U-Haul rental at any point? Yes. Can you describe the U-Haul rental for the jurors? The rental U-Haul was a van, um, like a, a van that um, like people that do painting would use. So it was a rental van? Yes. And I want to back up for just a moment. You said you were at the Connor Lodge Hotel. Was Harmony's body with you in that hotel? Yes. Where was that body? Where was Harmony being stored? In the fridge. Did the defendant tell you where he planned to dump Harmony's body? No. Did he leave with a rental van at some point? Yes. Did he leave with the CMC bag at the same time? Yes. When did he leave? It was in the middle of the night. Did he say anything to you before he left? No. Did he tell you what he was doing? No, but I already knew what he was doing. And that's because he told you before? Yes. Did he tell you specifically why he wasn't telling you where he was going, where he was dumping Harmony? Yes. Tell the jurors what he told you. He said he wasn't telling me where he was bringing her so that if anything like this happened and the cops got involved that I wouldn't be able to tell. I wouldn't know where she is, so I couldn't tell anybody where she is. Only he would know. Kayla, where is Harmony's body? I don't know. Kayla, where did he dump Harmony? I don't know. Did he return to the hotel room? Yes. And when did he return? It was like right before the sun came out. Did he say anything to you when he returned? That he got rid of her. That CMC bag, the one that he squished Harmony into? Yes. Was it still with him? No.
going to switch gears, Kayla. I told you we'd get back to this, but I want to talk about the time that you were living in the fit shelter, the time you were living in your apartment on Union Street. At some point during that time frame, early 2020, did the defendant begin to suspect that you were informing on him? Yes. Did he suspect that you were informing on him about Harmony? Sustained. I'll rephrase. Thank you. What did he suspect that you were informing on him about? About killing Harmony. And what did he do because of those suspicions? He started abusing me. I want to unpack that abuse. Can you tell the jurors what he did, what he did to you? When he would accuse me of talking to police or detectives, he would ask me if I was telling, and I would say no. And he would say just to tell him the truth. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't agree saying that I did. And then I, cause he would end up hitting me and I finally said that I did, even though I didn't, but you still hurt me anyway. You said that he, he ended up hitting you. He would still hurt me anyway. Yes. How did he hurt you, Kayla? By punching me. Where did he punch you? In the head. What did he punch you with, Kayla? His hands. Open hand, closed fist, something else? Both. How often did this happen to you? How often did he do this? Constantly. It just kept happening. What was it like living with him back then, Kayla? It was definitely not good. Do you recognize what's depicted in states, what's marked as States Exhibit 99, Kayla? Yes, it's me with two black eyes. Is that a fair and accurate representation of you on that day? Yes. Do you remember what day this was? March 17th. Is that of 2020 or 2021? 2021. Your Honor, I move to strike the ID Marcus Full and publish to the jury states exhibit 99. Any objection? No objection. All right, the ID is stricken. It is entered as a full exhibit. It may be published to the jury. Michaela, you said that the abuse started in early 2020. Yes. And you said that this photo was taken in March of 2021. Yes. You also said that this was a regular occurrence? Yes. From the time that the abuse began until you took this, this photograph, was it consistent with the defendant? Was he consistently accusing you? Yes. Was he consistently hitting you? Yes. Was he doing things to items in your house? Yes. What was he doing to the items in your house? Destroying everything. Breaking why, a lot of stuff. Why was he breaking things, Kayla? Because he thought that there was microphones in the house and I was telling on him and thought there was cameras. You said that he would hit you, that he would hurt you. Did he also threaten you? Yes. Tell the jurors what he said would happen to you. He said that he would be able to contact his family member, his uncle Kevin, and have him kill me and cut me in pieces and nobody would be able to find me. Did he say why that would happen? Why he would have that done? If I'm telling, if I ended up telling on him. Telling on him about what? About 
Harmony being murdered. What else did the defendant do when he suspected that you were working with the police? Mm. He was very abusive. During one of those incidents, do you recall trying to call someone for help, trying to get help? Yes. And Caleb, let me ask you this. Do you know someone named Roseanne Smith? Yes. Who is Roseanne Smith to you? She was um, the public transportation for the ride to the clinic. I want you to tell the jurors about an incident involving Mrs. Smith. I was going to the methadone clinic and I left without him while he was sleeping because he, he would tell me we're not going even when our ride showed up but I ended up going while he was sleeping and I went to I was getting dropped off and I had a black eye and Rose saw my black eye and I asked her if I could use her phone to call somebody so I could call my mom or somebody to help me and he saw that I was using her phone and he came and ripped it out of my and her hand. I was handing her back the phone and he ripped it out of her hand and asked who I was calling. And he was being very aggressive. Again, you were trying to call for help. Yeah. Do you know someone named Tara Hilbert? Yes. Tell the jurors about an incident involving Miss Hilbert. Uh, Adam would tell me that I couldn't leave the house and I, I ended up leaving and running out of the house and I had my daughter in my arms and I ran to Tara's apartment which was right next door and asked her if she could call my mom and then Adam came out and followed me and put me in a chokehold and said to tell her to not call my mom to don't make that phone call or else he's gonna hurt me. Kayla why couldn't you leave the house? Because he thought that I was trying to tell on him. And which... let me ask you this Kayla when you left the house, were your two small sons still in the house with him? Yes. Why did you only take your daughter? Because she was in my arms. I was already feeding her, and I just ran. I just ran out and to find help, and I could go back and get the kids. The image that I showed you, you described having bruising black eyes. Yeah. Does that day stand out to you, Kayla? Yes. Why does it stand out to you? Because that's the day that I took the kids and left. Are you still married to the defendant? Yes. When did you get married to him? On Harmony's birthday in 2017. Do you remember that day, Harmony's birthday? Yes. What day was it? It was June 7th. And can you tell us that date again that you, you left him? It was March 17th, 2021. Are you aware of whether or not he began a relationship with another individual after you left him? No. Do you know someone named Kelsey Small? Yeah. Did you ever meet Kelsey Small? Yes. Did officers in December of 2021 contact you regarding Harmony being missing? Yes. And you mentioned a lie earlier. Did you stick to that lie? Yes. 
I want you to tell the jurors why you stuck to that lie. Because Adam told me to just stay saying that lie. And so when they contacted you in December of 2021, you gave them that lie? Yes. And after they left you, did you contact Adam? Yes. What did he say when you contacted him? He said not to say anything and to say I want a lawyer and don't tell him where don't tell them where he is. Where was he at the time? In Maine. And did you tell him to get back here? Yes. Kayla, do you remember where you were on December 30th, 2021? I was at the family shelter. Do you remember going to a Walmart that day? Yes. Kayla, I'm showing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 65 for identification. Yeah. Do you recognize the individuals that are depicted in that image? It's Kelsey, <coughs> Kelsey, Adam, and myself. And can you point to Adam on that image? Is this a fair and accurate representation of you, Kelsey, and Adam at the Walmart on December 30th of 2021? Yes. <coughs> Your Honor, I move to strike ID and Marcus Full State's Exhibit 65. Any objection? No objection. The ID is stricken. It's entered as a full exhibit. It may be published to the jury. And you said, you pointed here? Is yes. That, that's Adam? Yes. I'm showing you what's been marked for identification as State's Exhibit 90. I'm just going to ask that you look at each page in turn. Do you recognize the individuals depicted in these images? Yes, it's Kelsey and me. I'm sorry, say that Kelsey again. Kelsey and me. Do you see the defendant anywhere in these images? Mm, that's not him. No. So it's Kelsey and you? Yeah. Again, is this the images that are depicted here accurate representations of you and Kelsey that day? Yes. Or in our move to strike ID and Marcus Full State's Exhibit 90. <coughs> Yes.
to the Walmart to do? Okay. To trade phones in for money. Do you remember how many phones you traded in that day? Like three or more. Whose phones did you trade in? Uh, mine and Adam's and I don't know who else. And can you remind us who were you with at the Walmart that day? It was myself, Kelsey, and Adam. Kayla, we spoke earlier about your convictions. Yes. Was that actually part of a plea agreement that you entered into? Yes. The testimony that you've provided today, what is your testimony based on? Actually being there. Is it based on the truth? Yes. At some point you were charged with perjury, and we talked about that earlier, but after that charge, did you agree to proffer information, to provide information to the state? Yes. What was the sentence that you received for your charges, your perjury charges? I got a three and a half to seven um, suspended. And then I got a three and a half to seven with one and a half off my minimum. And what portion of that prison sentence are you currently fulfilling today? My minimum. What's the suspended portion of your sentence as a whole? Um, for, it's three and a half to seven for 10 years. Other than the sentence conditions and your cooperation agreement with the state, are there additional conditions that you have to follow right now? To tell the truth. What happens if you breach that agreement? What happens if you violate that agreement? Then I get charged with whatever you guys decide to charge me with, with all my charges that got dropped and whatever else. Kayla, what's the primary, what's your primary obligation under that agreement? To tell the truth. And I want to follow up just briefly with a few of the things that you've said. You testified earlier that the defendant told you he hit Harmony back in July of 2019. Yes. You said that, that he gave Harmony a black eye that day. Yes. You said that he murdered Harmony on December 7th, that you witnessed him murder Harmony on December 7th, 2019. Yes. You said that you saw him carry Harmony's body for months and compressing her, squishing her into a bag. Yes. You said that after months of carrying her, he ultimately disposed of Harmony's body. Yes. I'm going to ask you if you're able to identify the person that you've said did those things. Kayla, okay, I'm showing you what's been published as State's Exhibit 101. Do you recognize the individual that's depicted in this image? Yes. Who is that? Adam Montgomery. Is that the Adam Montgomery that you refer to as abusing you for those months and months? Yes. The same one that you said gave Harmony a black eye, confessed to giving Harmony a black eye? Yes. The <coughs> same one that beat Harmony to death, that murdered her in the Sebring? Yes. Kayla, at any point, did you pull Harmony out of the Sebring and stuff her into that duffel bag? No. At any point, <coughs> did you fold her in half as you described the defendant doing? No. Did you walk her to Badero's? No. Did you take her <coughs> and put her in the ceiling of your room at the fit shelter? No. Did you smush her 
into a CMC bag like the one I showed you earlier? No. Did you compress her further and add lime to her in the bathroom of your Union Street apartment? No. Did you put her in a U-Haul van and dump her somewhere? No. Who did those things, Kayla? Adam Montgomery. At any point when you were living in that vehicle after you've been evicted, were you ever alone with Harmony? No. Why not? Because there was, we were just always in the car. Kayla, I want you to look at these jurors. <laughs> Kayla, did you kill Harmony? No, I did not. Did you beat her to death? No, I did not. Were you alone with her when she died? No, I was not. If I could have just a moment. Kayla, thank you. I have no additional questions here.